Hello everyone. We are excited to announce that we have started a new series on podcast interviews with cyber security experts or experts from the other disruptive technologies field. The podcast interviews will help us to get latest information on the technologies development to get insights on cyber security industry trends to gain knowledge and to learn something new welcome to the second podcast interview from the series of podcast interviews on disruptive and trending technologies in this podcast we will discuss on cyber security with a cyber security expert please like and subscribe to this channel if you want to receive other insightful podcast interviews like this and other educational videos on the disruptive technologies to begin with for me and for our listeners a short answer to what is cyber security i mean how to define cyber security Okay, thanks for inviting me to this podcast. Uh, let's start off with, you know, cybersecurity is the body of practices, processes, and technologies designed to protect data, devices, programs, and networks from attack. Okay, so some data are sensitive information which should be personal. They include intellectual property and financial data, among others. Okay, so with the arrival of every new year follows the arrival of new challenges in the cyberspace for cybersecurity against cybercrime. Okay, being the body of practices, processes, and technologies designed to protect data, devices, programs, and networks from attack, the cyberspace has become a battlefield for cybersecurity to ward off hackers and cybercriminals. With years of struggle, hackers have gotten the upper hand. And to them, your data has either been hacked or will be hacked. That was interesting. So for the knowledge of our listeners, please tell us something about who all are prone to cyber attacks. So anyone, yes, anyone that uses a computer network is prone to cyber attacks. So there are cyber criminals who attack computers just to steal sensitive data or information, sometimes to just hijack computer networks and lock the users out. This is called ransomware. Computer users are faced with this threat almost every day. So you can boast that you can have an experienced cyber attacks before, but you may have and you may not know. There is a cyber attack called Advanced Persistent Threat, so APT. We will discuss about APT in detail during this interview. So advanced persistent threat is one out of the many types of cyber threats that attacks integrity. Well, this happens when an unauthorized user gains access to your network, okay, without your knowledge and then stays undetected in the network for a long period. That was threatening. So tell us on what hackers want to get or what they want to know about us. So cyber threats are constantly evolving. Cyber criminals are taking different forms to attack vulnerable computers or networks, and it is of utmost importance to be careful and always stay informed of their latest forms of attacks so as not to fall, you know, victim, right? Yeah, so there are so many types out there, so many types of cyber threats out there, but they all generally fall into three categories, which we will briefly discuss, okay? So these categories are attacks on one, confidentiality, two, availability, and three, integrity. Okay, so when it comes to attacks on confidentiality, these are attacks that are mainly designed to steal confidential information or data. They steal your personal identifying information, including your bank account or um, credit card details, right? So after a successful attack on your confidentiality, your confidential information is then traded on the dark web for others to purchase and use. So this attack exposes one to a financial and moral downturn. Okay, next up we have attacks and availability. So this is another type of cyber attack, okay, um, which aims to block or lock, right, users out from accessing his or her data until they pay a certain, you know, a ransom or fee. You know, typically a cyber criminal infiltrates the network of unsuspecting computer users uh, or company, okay, and then restrict them from accessing their information until they pay a ransom. 
Uh, last, we have attacks on integrity. These types of attacks center predominantly on the sabotaging of personal or enterprise information or data. Okay, cyber criminals will gain access to this information and then try to release it to the general public so that the public will lose interest or trust in that particular organization or person. So just as the name implies, this is an attack on an individual or enterprise personality, image, and integrity. That was insightful. Thanks for that. Okay, so I have read about all types of cyber threats as well in blogs and magazines. Can you please briefly explain about the types of cyber threats? Of course, that's a, that's a great question. And there are multiple types, okay? First one I can say, as I already touched upon, is one, um, APT, so it's Advanced Persist Threat. Uh, this is an attack on integrity. This is a kind of attack when an, an authorized user, okay, infiltrates a network of an individual, company, or government sectors, undetected for the purpose of mining for information without actually harming the network. So these APT attacks are usually hard to detect, okay, because as the name implies, they're advanced attacks. They cost a lot of money and time to develop. APT is developed to source for highly sensitive information such as a nation's power grid, you know, finance industry, uh, even the national defense, right, and, and etc. Okay. Second one may be malware. So this enters the computer through different means, such as clicking on an insecure link or through emails. Okay. The you know this is a malicious attack, and this is also a type of you know of attack on availability. So this is a malicious software that's designed to gain access or damage a computer without the owner knowing anything. Malware does all sorts of things, from stealing such as login information to completely crashing a computer system. Okay, Examples of malware include spyware, keylogger, true viruses, and also worms. Third one may be ransomware. So we've talked about that. It's also an attack uh, on availability. So this malicious software is designed to gain access to a computer network while locking and encrypting um, the network and computer that, such that the user won't be able to use the computer unless he or she pays a ransom. So examples of ransomware include scareware and crypto malware. Next one could be uh, phishing. Right? Phishing, this is a cyber practice that involves sending fraudulent emails to unsuspecting computer users. These emails always resemble from you know, reputable sources. The aim of this is just to steal the user's data, credit card numbers, pins, and also passwords. So a phishing attack is quite common when it comes to social engineering. All right? So the fifth one may be man in the middle. So um, MITM attacks, right? MITM attacks. This is also known as eavesdropping attacks. So as just as the name implies, this occurs when a cyber intruder imposes himself in the middle of a two-party transaction. By this, the attacker can steal data after he has interrupted the traffic. So the man in the middle attacks come in two ways. So one is using unsecured Wi-Fi. Connection to a public Wi-Fi that is not secure can lead to, you know, um, man in the middle attack. And this can lead to a severe data breach, so you have to be careful. Number two, using an already breached device. A computer system that has already been breached by malware is vulnerable to this type of attack. Okay, so next one could be DNS tunneling. Attackers use this to disguise outbound traffic like DNS, then proceed to conceal data that is shared by unsuspected internet users through an internet. There is no denying the fact that cyber defense tactics are evolving and also on the rise. But while they're evolving, cybersecurity threats are also evolving. With cyber criminals multiplying, malicious software taking new forms, politics at the very edge where propaganda's agendas are the order of the day, and terrorists using the internet as the new tool for terrorism. So global connectivity and also the use of cloud services such as Amazon Web Services to store sensitive data and personal information have furthermore increased cybersecurity risk. Okay, 
So as I understood, there are many types of cyber threats present as of now and in future we may see a few new as well. Now let me and our listeners learn about risk. I mean uh, what is cyber security risk and how is it different or same from cyber terrorism? Hmm. Um, well, cyber security risk is the attack launched by cyber criminals against one or more computers or networks. So cyber attacks are mainly designed or programmed to steal data or sensitive information. They are also designed to use a breached computer as a launch point uh, for another attack. So let us familiarize ourselves with the three types of cybersecurity risks, and they include cyber threats, cyber attacks, and cyber terrorism. You know, uh, so cyber crimes are committed by one or more individuals whose sole aim is to target vulnerable computers or networks. So these cyber attacks may be committed for political reasons, something that's called hacktivism, right? So there's a hacktivism, activism, right? So they do this to spread political agendas and also to source for an opponent's vital piece of information. For example, hacktivism is an example for DOS or denial of service attack which aims to shut down a system to prevent it from getting accessed by a customer. Another example uh, for, of hacktivism is providing citizens with access to government censored or classified pages. All right. So let's go to cyber terrorism now. Cyber terrorism is designed to breach electronic or computer systems and then instill panic and fear you know, into the victims. So just like terrorism, the goal is of cyber terrorism is to gain enough attention, okay, to cause panic and fear among civilians as a whole. So while terrorists use bombs, right, so cyber terrorists, on the other hand, use, you know, uses the internet. Okay, again, I understood it to some extent. If we talk about security on a broader level, IT security. Do we need to consider any other types of security? I mean, are there any other kinds of security that we need to know? So yeah, that's a that's a great question actually. Uh, so there are various types of cybersecurity, and they include one critical infrastructure security. So this one is a type of security that consists of uh, cyber physical systems, you know, that modern societies rely on. So examples of this would be. Um, electricity grid, traffic lights, uh, water purification, hospitals, and, you know, other examples too, right? Number two would be application security. So an application security, um, so it's one of the most uh, important security measures to protect your network or systems, right? So it uses both software and hardware. Uh, so these methods to tackle um, external threats. So the types of application security include firewall, um, encryption, and antivirus programs. So on to the next one. Our third one is cloud security. So cloud security is the software-based security. Uh, so this is a tool that helps users protect theirs on the cloud. Okay. So cloud security is probably the safest security tool right now. So this is because cloud providers have been so consistent in the way that they have implemented you know the new security tools to help users secure their data yeah so number four we have internet of things security or iot security so this refers to varieties of critical and non-critical cyber systems so um, examples on top of my head would be uh, television wi-fi printer cameras and etc right on to number five we have information security so this is the um otherwise known as infosec all right, so it helps to protect both physical and digital data from unauthorized access, uh, use, disclosure, and deletion by an um, unknown party, so anyone you don't know, right? All right, so number six is data loss prevention. So this consists of developing policies and strategies that will be useful when it comes to handling and preventing, okay, the loss of data. Okay, so this also provides recovery policies when a server has been breached. So this includes setting network permission for um, data storage. All right, and number seven, we have end user education. So this is about teaching users to follow the right protocols or procedures when it comes to working on um, the internet. 
so they include teaching them not to click on suspicious or unknown links attached to emails. So also monitoring their network server for unusual behavior, etc. So failure to do this may let in malware or other forms of malicious software. And last would be network security. So network security involves um, securing a computer network from unauthorized access, whether opportunistic malwares or even targeted attacks. All right. Okay. So if I want to know how to protect ourselves from cyber attack, what measures we or an organization can take? All right. So this is um, this is what we want to know and be aware about. So in a world where virtually everything is connected to the internet, so the best ways to protect yourself, your network, and your business are by staying informed and also being cautious online. So ways by which one can be cautious include using a trusted website when providing your personal information. So this involves checking the URL before accessing the website. So a good and secure URL should be, all right, so imagine this, HTTPS colon slash slash. The addition of an S demarcates that the site is secure. So if the S, all right, is missing, avoid such URL. So next would be avoiding emails with suspicious links. So the most common way people get uh, attacked is by emails, right? So that's disguised to have been sent from someone you know or trust. So be careful, all right? So always update your device and antivirus so periodic software updates contain patches that help to fix security vulnerabilities so keep on updating them okay also invest in security training for your employees so through negligence from the employee cyber criminals usually gain access to computers and networks thereby making off with sensitive data never forget of course please never forget to back up your data so make it a norm to back up your sensitive data to an external file or cloud right so such that when you get attacked the damage will be limited next uh, you can implement multi-factor identification so this is another cybersecurity tool to mitigate the intrusion of cyber criminals right so this type of security that grants access to users only if they provide something only they know so this is usually a password or a secret question. So it's something in the form of that. Most importantly, avoid connecting to an unsecured Wi-Fi network in public places. So the unsecured Wi-Fi leaves users vulnerable to attacks. And that is usually a man in the middle type of an attack, as I've mentioned before, right? Hmm. So uh, don't forget, always use a strong password. So your password should be very strong and secure. The best way to create a strong password is by mixing letters together with special symbols and numbers and refrain from dropping your password to unsecured sites or even people uh, around you. Okay. So always be vigilant for strange activities on your network traffic. Always be on the lookout for in and outbound encryption messages on your server. Uh, always perform penetration and vulnerability assessment at least mm, once in a while. Okay, the best way to mitigate cyber threats is by testing how vulnerable a system is to these types of attacks. And last but not least, uh, always prepare for the worst case scenario. So this means that you should develop an emergency incident response, right? Or IR plan, uh, incident response plans. So I think I have given many ways we can protect ourselves from cyber attacks. Yes. Okay. Uh, can there be a chance that an organization would not want to implement or incorporate cyber security in the organization? Uh, can there be a reason? Hmm. Yeah. Like there is always two sides of the coin. Okay. So cyber security helps to keep our network and data safe from hackers. Cyber security also has its own disadvantages. And they include um, one, cost. It may be too costly uh, for an average computer user, so not everyone can afford it. Um, next would be inability to configure the firewall correctly. So there's a lot of people who struggles uh, to get the firewall up and running, which at the end of the day will leave room for cyber criminals to attack. It might make the system slower than usual. So this is because of a heavy antivirus or any cyber defense software that might have been installed. So this software can make the computer lag and unresponsive. Okay. 
So another reason would be the need to update computer or device softwares to keep the security up to date, right, can consume time. And this sometimes bores users. I, I, I pretty much understand that. But overall, right, I would like to say that the advantage of cybersecurity outweighs the disadvantages, okay, because it helps protect our network from intruders. And it also protects the computer from viruses and malware such as Trojan horse and etc. Okay, so it also protects the computer from getting hacked by cyber criminals, and most importantly, it protects the computer against data theft. Uh, you mentioned about APT during our initial discussion. What is an APT? Also, give us some background about it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yes, I did. Um, okay, so let's first discuss about cyber threat. Okay, cyber threat has been a lifelong issue facing computer users, be it an individual or organization or even government agencies, right? So cyber criminals are not picky in selecting their targets as they tend to attack all systems belonging to individuals, organizations, or even government agencies, right? So their attacks range widely from infiltration on infrastructure and data breaches to spear phishing and brute force. So you probably know a thing or two about these terms since they are part of our everyday lives in the modern world. A cybersecurity threat is a malicious act that seeks to damage data, steal data, or disrupt digital life in general. So cyber threats include attacks like computer viruses, data breaches, and denial of service or DOS attacks. Okay, Cyber threat refers to the possibility of a successful cyber attack on an individual or organization to gain unauthorized access to intellectual property, uh, sensitive data, and even the computer network. So cyber attacks can come from trusted users or unknown parties like hackers, hacktivists, who are you know politically you know um, motivated cyber criminals, or even organized crime groups and even terrorist groups. Accidental actions of authorized users also contribute massively to a data breach. It is, in fact, the most common source of data leaks. Cyber threats take different forms to infiltrate different target systems depending on the level of security such a system is fortified with. So, however, uh, their sole purpose is to steal and compromise data or information. So, the most common forms of cyber threats are one, um, malwares. Right? So you've heard of this. This software performs a malicious act on targeted devices, uh, ranging from corrupting the data to completely taking over the system. Uh, you've heard about phishing. So PH, right? Uh, phishing. This uses emails it to trick uh, the email recipient into disclosing sensitive information or downloading malware by clicking on a hyperlink in the email. So the next one you've heard about somewhere before. So this is Trojan. Okay, so this is a type of malware that enters this target system while disguising itself as something else and then let's have the malicious code once it gets into the system. So it's just like the story, uh, right? Next would be ransomware. So this takes full control of your system and locks you out completely until you agree to pay for it to be released. It's crazy, right? It's, it's definitely crazy. Um, next one would be data breach. So simply put it as theft of data by an actor. So some of the motives that are included here would be crimes, which constitute mainly of identity theft, erasing of evidence, erasing names from a database, or actually even espionage. So like um, every other event that occurs, cybersecurity threats have their agents. So on the spectrum of cyber threat agents, uh, the following are pretty much well known. Okay, so one accidental agent. So these are the most common agents of data leaks. Here, a data leak occurs as a result of a careless use of the system by employees. All right. Next would be malicious agents like ad hoc. You know, for example, script kiddies are also means by which a system can be infiltrated and compromised. Organized agents, for example, would be hacktivists, etc. And these are less sophisticated agents of cyber threat. APTs, right? So advanced persistent threats are the last agents on the spectrum. And they are highly sophisticated agents. APTs are either one, strategically motivated. So that is professional hackers engaging in cyber attacks or cyber terrorism on behalf and for the benefit of a third party. 
or operationally motivated. So that is a hacker or a group of hackers that engage in cyber attacks or activities for their game. So advanced persistent threats refer to very dangerous threats that greatly affect any enterprise or brand which is targeted. Also referred to as APT, so advanced persistent threats are attacks through which unauthorized parties gain access to a network or system. So as the case may be, and stay within the system for a long time undetected. While most advanced persistent threats do not cause any serious damage to the enterprise's local machines, network, or systems, rather it is a means to get sensitive data, making it a tool for data theft. What kind of information hackers are interested in when they do APT attacks? Okay, so one, intelligence gathering that is illegal mining of information from a network. Two, data exfiltration that is unauthorized data transmission to external location where it's controlled, encrypted under the attacker's control. If you see, ABD can, therefore, is seen as multi phase attacks involving the penetration of illegal entry into an individual or organization network and probing for valuable data, information, and other vulnerabilities. The government can also finance an APT attack or attacks. They do this when they wish to source for information from other countries and also to influence the public interest of the target country. The most amazing thing about APT is their ability to ghost themselves, all right? completely in a network without being noticed. An average APT can last months in a system while doing numerous damages to the recipient organization and stealing data and trading secrets. Advanced persistent threats still represent an ongoing danger to organizations, government agencies, and individuals too. Simply put, APTs are often characterized by their sustained, sophisticated, and multi-prolonged efforts to gain access to an organization's networks and computers. They use advanced techniques like anti-sandboxing, polymorphism, and multiple stage payloads to avoid being detected. So, you know, APT should be considered as a much higher level of threat as it differs from other types of malicious attacks. Uh, contrary to some malicious cyber agents that produce quick damaging attacks, APTs take stealthy and more strategic approach. Attacks infiltrate the system via malware like phishing or trojans after which their attack software is stealthily planted into the entire system network. This action can last months or even years before they are detected. Perhaps defining the initials one after the other will create a better understanding of the term because each initial denotes an idea that makes up the whole. A stands for advanced. So when we talk about the advanced, we're talking about something that supersedes the normal ones. They often combine multiple targeting tools and methods to reach a targeted network or computer. And since they're that advanced, it takes time for them to be developed and it costs a huge amount of money to produce. Okay, let's go to P. P stands for persistence. So that is having and being persistent on an objective or a target. Rather than seeking information from various sources, APT hackers have clear objective or specific tasks because they're guided by external entities. And last, T stands for threat. Regardless of form or type, APT is always a threat to information security. Uh, is there any life cycle for detecting or finding advanced persistent threats? The longer APT stays in a network, the more it manifests itself. So like every known organism, APT also follows a consistent life cycle to infiltrate and operate inside an organization. In targeted attacks, the APT life cycle follows a continuous process of six key phases, which are first, intelligence gathering. So this cycle involves the identification and research carried out on a target using public sources like social media. So this is when they prepare for an attack. So this prepares them for an attack. All right, so number two, point of entry. So this means the delivery of zero-day malware using social engineering, so emails. A backdoor is then created and information can then be siphoned away. The third one, it's CNC communication or command and control uh, communication. This refers to the communication used throughout an attack to instruct and control 
the malware used. After that is called the, the fourth one, the lateral movement. So this is a cycle where the original attack has compromised additional machines. Okay, This means that when the ABT has spent a long time on the network, the hacker can control the network beyond his initial target. So it means the longer the ABT stays on the network, the more it grows. Next, we have the asset or data discovery. So the fifth step involves the use of techniques to scout for servers that hold the information of interest. And last but not least, of course, data exfiltration. So this is the last stage. And this involves unauthorized data transmission to external locations without leaving behind a single trace. Uh, what are the characteristics of an advanced persistent threat? So. APTs are in no way the same as normal internet threats because of some certain features. The more sophisticated a threat agent is, the more its features distinguish it from an average threat. The characteristics of an APT include, but are not limited to the following. One, objectives. So the objective could be political, strategic, or espionage related. Uh, the objective is to repeatedly source for sensitive data over an extended time. In short, they have clear goals. The objective must be clear and specific. So since APTs are sophisticated, they're not launched for minor and less significant issues. So number two, another clear characteristic of an APT is its actual cost to develop. So they can be expensive. So it costs a whole lot of money to develop an APT because they're produced or developed by highly skilled teams of cyber criminals. So that's why they're mostly groups and not individuals. So when we talk about resources, we are not only talking about the money involved, but also the time involved. In short, it takes time and costs a lot of money. So number three, we have risk tolerance. So ABT hackers have a low risk tolerance and, and such, right, expect everything to be accurate. So they don't leave everything to chance, okay? And this trait widely differentiates them from the average hacker. So their attacks are carefully planned and designed with the knowledge of a target's vulnerabilities to remain undetected for a long period. Number four, we have knowledge source. So knowledge source for advanced persistent threats usually have the same characteristics because they all emanate from the same cyber group. Be that as it may, they may not necessarily fit the same pattern. Number five, multi-phase. So advanced persistent threats go through several phases, which we will discuss Social engineering. So this refers to the stage where research is being done to gather information on the system to be attacked. Next, we also have entry and infiltration. So this is the stage where the APT is launched. So it is usually delivered into the system using exploit kits, phishing, or other methods deemed fit. You mentioned about cyber security analyst. Who is a cyber security analyst? And what are their roles and responsibilities all right okay so cyber attacks are a regular occurrence so as hackers employ increasingly sophisticated techniques to breach security protocols and bypass systems and networks to access sensitive data and disrupt operations a sound cybersecurity strategy is essential to protecting sensitive data intellectual property and infrastructure Cyber analysts act as the watchman, so the gatekeeper, guardian of your data, and defender of your cyber universe, right? When breaches do occur, they are the special forces response team that rids your system of intruders and rebuilds defenses. So cybersecurity analysts are trained personnel who plan and implement security measures to protect systems and networks from hacking. They, along with you know, key business stakeholders, are responsible for the security of the systems and networks of commercial organizations and government agencies, safeguarding them from cybercrime. Hacking methods evolve almost daily, so a cybersecurity analyst must stay current on and even anticipate the latest technology, methods of attack, and prevention and recovery protocols. To do this effectively, an understanding of the businesses and the enterprise they support is essential. As they monitor, analyze, and address any potential or real threat, they provide critical data and insights to leadership regarding risk levels. What do cyber analysts do? Ah, yes. Um, so in short, they protect and monitor your network and respond, report, 
in case of you know any vulnerabilities. They um, one they deploy security measures. So cybersecurity analysts are responsible for security software and other protections. Okay, this requires a thorough understanding of the risks, the likelihood of attack, the most likely hacker or hackers, the business, its operations, and its tolerance for risk. So when a breach or suspected breach occurs, they are the first responders who deploy their company's response protocols or formulate a real-time response if the protocol doesn't cover the breach. They monitor networks for security issues. So when cyber analysts watch for any irregularities or suspicious activities on your systems and pinpoint them for evaluation. So when necessary, they immediately uh, de deploy response and remediation or protocols to protect your company and your constituents. Uh, number three, uh, investigate breaches and cybersecurity issues. So with analysts, so cybersecurity analysts, they act on any suspicious indicators. Their unique knowledge and expertise enables them to spot anomalies and assess threats, ideally before they are successful. So their investigative expertise is critical to developing and maintaining an effective enterprise-wide cyber strategy for defense, recovery, and resiliency. Number four, document and triage all breaches. Okay, so each cyber risk must be triaged not just to assess and address the current risk, but to inform future protections, okay? Documenting security events and analysis provides a valuable historical view of threats, responses, trends, and ROI. So this insight is vital to both prevention and resilience. So number five, scenarios and simulation. So in order to be well positioned to prevent and respond, cyber analysts identify the most likely risk scenarios and run simulations to identify and resolve vulnerabilities. So based on this exercise, they take the necessary steps to remedy issues. And number six, okay, so advice management. So the cyber analyst is the SME on cyber risk. So in addition to maintaining familiarity with the latest risks, okay, the technology and business requirements, their analysis and reporting can provide significant insights on vulnerability response and ROI. Let's not forget about prevention education, okay? So cybersecurity analysts are also deeply involved in educating the entire workforce on the best practices for protecting themselves and their constituents for cybercrime. So cybersecurity analysts develop policies procedures and practices to be distributed to and followed by employees to ensure that networks, systems, and information across the organization are protected. So the role of the cyber analyst is key to the security of the organization, bringing a highly specialized knowledge and skill set to protect the company, its customers and vendors, and its employees. So they are important not just to the systems and networks that house your data, but to the CEO, the board, and business leaders who drive investments in security and the individuals whose daily practice must support the protection of valuable data assets and operational systems. Thanks a lot for the insightful interview. I hope our listeners and I learned a lot about cybersecurity. Do drop us your comments if you want to have podcast interview on any specific topic. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel if you want to receive other insightful podcast interviews like this and other educational videos on the disruptive technologies.